A woman convicted of killing a man while driving drunk officially sentenced. This noon, we're hearing from the victim's wife. The emotional speech she delivered in court this morning, still ahead. Local volunteers spending the morning filling up stockings for military members just in time for the holidays. Why one man says giving back in this way is important to him. Still ahead. Live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. New this noon, a woman who hit and killed a well-known San Antonio surgeon and cyclist has now been sentenced to 15 years behind bars. Three years ago, Melissa Peoples was driving drunk when she hit 58-year-old Najee Kairouz. Last month, Peoples agreed to a 15-year prison sentence after pleading guilty to intoxication manslaughter and pleading no contest to a charge of failure to stop and render aid. In February of 2019, Carews was riding his bicycle in the bike lane of Interstate 10 Access Road when he was hit and killed. It happened near the Dominion this morning. His wife addressed the court and why she believes her husband's death was no accident. This was not an accident. This was a crime. You knew that you should not be, that you should not drink and drive. You personally, personally knew that drinking and driving could cause the death or serious injury. Let me outline for you and for the court and for everyone listening today how this was not an accident. You were arrested for drunk driving in the past in Williamson County. You were discharged from an inpatient rehab just days prior to, my, to you killing my husband where part of the program reviews the consequences of drinking and driving. But it doesn't stop there. You have a brother, Greg, who is paralyzed because of injuries incurred by a drunk driver. And your Aunt Brenda, your mother's sister, was on the phone with you for 40 minutes, an hour before you killed my husband. She pleaded with you to pull over and to stop drinking while you were driving. But you didn't listen. Instead, you decided to continue to drive drunk. You crossed lanes into the shoulder where my husband, was legally cycling and killed him. It was a horrific event. Peoples drove off after hitting the victim, but was later arrested at her home when witnesses helped lead police to her. San Antonio police hoping that home video from neighbors will help them learn more about the people who shot a man after he interrupted a car burglary. The victim was outside of his home in Monticello Court near East South Cross when he was wounded overnight. Our Katrina Weber shows us why this crime also may have killed his holiday spirit. Lights atop police cars compete for attention with holiday displays in the 500 block of Monticello Court. The reds and blues were in response to trouble shortly before three this morning. I came out and, um, you know, there was police cars. There was about eight or nine police cars here. And right here where we're standing is where they were putting markers. They were putting down those um, little yellow markers. What Joseph Salazar saw was San Antonio police mapping out a crime against his neighbor. Police say the 41 year old man was in his backyard shed when he heard someone in his driveway breaking into his pickup. He went to check and found himself face to face with armed burglars. The man told police he had just finished spreading some holiday cheer, putting up all these lights when he suddenly found himself fearing for his life with bullets flying at him. It was five gunshots um, in about 2.45 in the morning. One of those shots hit the homeowner in his leg. He later went to a hospital on his own. Police say the gunshots were fired by someone in a waiting car accomplices of the man who broke into the truck. In all, they believe there were three crooks who got away. Police hope video from neighbors might lead them to them. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Pfizer says its experimental COVID-19 pill cuts the risk of hospitalization or death by 89%. Those updated results come from a study where the pill called Plaxalid were given to nearly 700 unvaccinated people within three days of symptom onset. Five of those who had the pill had to be hospitalized. None died. Among a similar size group that received a placebo, 44 were hospitalized and nine died. Pfizer says the pill also could be effective against variants because it works by blocking an enzyme involved in viral replication. That process remains the same even as the virus's spike protein mutates. The company has asked the Food and Drug Administration for emergency youth authorization for its pill, but the FDA has not yet set a date to discuss it.
The count is in, and thanks to the partnership between the KSAT community and San Antonio Police and Good Samaritan Community Services, more than 1,600 pairs of shoes have been collected to give out to families in and around the Alamo City. Max Massey with an inside look at today's sorting and counting party and all the emotions involved. With her illness and the treatment that was needed, they didn't have Christmas, they didn't have very many clothes for her, and being able to bring in these, not only Christmas presents, but the shoes that she needs brought a smile on her face that I'm not gonna forget for years. Officer Jonathan Cokerham is a member of the SAPD San Antonio Fear Free Environment Unit. He is one of the officers instrumental in our Share the Shoes initiative, so helping families really in and around our community. The holidays are extremely stressful financially and having a warm new pair of shoes goes a long way, especially for the families that we serve at Good Samaritan. Today, the Christmas music was playing, the tables were filled, and the officers and volunteers were sorting. You can see that there's shoes here this big and the shoes here this big, so we, we, we've covered the gambit, and uh, hopefully it'll be a, bring a little bit of holly warmth to some folks. We have so many types of shoes, everything's from Crocs to Paw Patrol. So many types of shoes, all at different shapes and sizes, and it means it's going to help out so many families in and around San Antonio. So that means that every single one will get a pair of shoes. It means that it we're taking a little bit off that stress and that financial financial burden for our families. It is so inspiring to see these piles of donations, and for some, it's an emotional experience. Being able to put a smile on a child's face and bring them these shoes. It's something you can't forget. If you missed out on helping through November, you can still give back. If you're interested for more information, just head to KSAT.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Also this morning, 1,000 local families were able to line up and pick up necessities and Christmas gifts. The San Antonio Housing Authority was able to give the items out for free thanks to donations from people here in the community. Saha says this is the largest gift distribution it has ever hosted. The organization received more than 2,500 toys and about 500 adults will also get some much needed essentials. Today we get to distribute some of the basic needs that I think many of us take for granted. Laundry soap, twin bed sheets. Those were the, those were the requests from our older adults, from our kiddos, Pokemon cards, um, Ryan's World, which, you know, those are just toys. We have basketballs and volleyballs and baby dolls, everything to give out. And it just, it, it's a wonderful opportunity for us as an uh, organization and the thousands of families that we continue to serve every year. Saha says they collected the donations through local organizations and through its Amazon wish list. For some military members, the holidays mean spending time without their loved ones. But this Christmas, a nonprofit organization is hoping to brighten the spirits of deployed service members and veterans. Soldiers Angels is stuffing holiday stockings. They're going to be shipped out to service members and veterans in VA hospitals. And the organization is needing some more volunteers this holiday season. Tiffany Huertas takes us behind the scenes of this project and what it means to those receiving the stockings. It means that somebody somewhere cares. Somebody somewhere is thinking about troops that are deployed. Rich Scott spent Tuesday morning helping stuff stockings at Soldiers Angels headquarters. I love being on this side of it. Scott served for 23 years in the military and remembers what it was like to receive care packages. I got care packages um, in Afghanistan and Iraq, and, and it was really cool to be able to share that the things that I got in those packages with other people. These stockings will go to service members deployed to combat zones and veteran patients in VA hospitals across the country. For service members that are deployed, sometimes this is the only thing that they'll be getting, especially if they don't have family back home. The nonprofit will be shipping more than 40,000 stockings this year. All of them are unique, have different items and snacks, and will include a special message from Soldiers Angels. As you can tell by all the boxes here, we couldn't do it without volunteers. The nonprofit is looking for volunteers to help stuff the stockings and monetary donations to help with shipping costs. I love being able to just, you know, put a little care um, into something that somebody's going to open over the holidays and be reminded that, that folks are thinking about them and, and folks are caring about them. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Does this sound familiar? Near record highs this week and then a cold front this weekend. We do it all again. We'll take a look at the forecast coming up. And a huge honor for former Spurs great and a Hall of Famer, the Iceman, George Gervin.
Now to the latest on the deadliest tornado outbreak in more than a decade. At least 88 people are now dead across five states. 44 reported tornadoes hitting America's heartland. President Biden is planning to visit some of the hardest hit communities tomorrow, including Mayfield, Kentucky. ABC's Rita Roy has the latest. Stories of survival amid the devastation in this small town of Mayfield. It was almost like you were in a war where grenades went off. Charles Cook's home was wiped away. He, his pregnant wife, and four children, all under the age of 10, were picked up by tornado force winds and thrown into a field more than 100 yards away. I remember the lightning, uh, the, the power flickering, and then it went off. And next thing you know, I felt suction, slipped, hit the ceiling. And I woke up in the woods looking up at a dark sky while it was raining. Charlotte Payne was working the night shift at the candle factory in town when it collapsed. Just fear and death. That's what I was afraid. You know, I was afraid I was listening to people die. And the number of lives lost just keeps going up. We expect that this death toll will continue to grow. 47-year-old Robert Daniel, 21-year-old Devin Burton, and 36-year-old Joe Ward died at that factory. Across the state, dozens more are gone, including two-month-old Oakland Coon. Town after town now left picking up the pieces left behind by this catastrophic storm. Every day has kind of been a learning curve for it because, like I said, it's not something you, you can't really train for something like this. You know, there's really nothing that you can do to prepare yourself for something, uh, an event this size. The governor of Kentucky says it will take years to clean up this mess and rebuild here. This town forever changed. Rena Roy, ABC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. And back here at home, we are helping those who are impacted by those devastating tornadoes. Our KSAT community partners, along with the Red Cross, will be hosting a phone bank. It's tomorrow from noon until 7 p.m. So you want to keep it right here on KSAT and KSAT.com for more information on how you can donate and help out. We'll share the number to call coming up tomorrow. Meantime, looking outside. Yeah, this is going to be our week right here. Pretty much. A lot, a lot of cloud cover. We'll get drizzle and fog in the morning. We saw it this morning. The fog is lifted for the most part, but we're still dealing with a little bit of drizzle out there. The aquifer has not changed. It's holding steady at 663.2. In your pollen count, molds and mountain cedar are both there, but they're both below 120 and 70, respectively. We do get our big changes this weekend. Cold front, cooler, windy, wet. Another look at that uh, weekend forecast is coming up. This SA Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by IAQ Cleaning. From our IAQ experts family to yours, we want to wish the military a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Thank, Thank you, you for your service. What did you just say was coming up cold, wet, rainy, cold, something? You had like two W's and two C's in there. It's like cold. It was like, it was really neat the way you put it. I have no idea where he's going with this. A lot of adjectives uh, <laughs> to describe the weekend. He I described the winter ah, is what he did. He yeah, did, he described he, he he Texas say. winter. <laughs> Warm, <laughs> wet, messy, foggy, misty. <laughs> The list goes on. Chilly uh, we, and then kind of hot. <laughs> yeah, we're getting it all. We're getting it all. Although I would say it's trended warmer so far this uh, this winter. Well, we're not into winter yet, but uh, trended war it's trending warmer this December. And today's no exception. This week will be no exception until we get into the weekend. Let's start with the radar, guys. We'll show you what is out there rain-wise. Nothing here in San Antonio. That's not to say we're not seeing a little bit of drizzle. There's some wet roads out there. It's, it's all very, very light stuff and technically hasn't added up to much. We don't even, don't even uh, report. We haven't had a report of any uh, measurable rainfall at the airport. But you do notice that we've got some showers moving south to north uh, through the Quero area, trying to move into Lavaca County towards Howitzville. These showers uh, will put down uh, maybe a quick burst of rain, but you're not going to get much out of these either as they lift off to the north. And again, we're not seeing much here in San Antonio. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. And if you're in Shiner, you're going to get a shower here soon. Same for Moulton as these work up towards I-10. San Antonio just again seeing that light drizzle. There's the cloud cover. It's uh, it's thick in spots, although trying to uh, thin out down here to the south, you'll notice there are some breaks and that is what is moving in our direction. It'll take some time, but I do think we could see a few peaks of sun this afternoon, which will boost temperatures. But right now we're sitting at 67. 
and you can see the difference places like Catula where the sun has popped out from time to time 77 there 73 in Carrizo Springs but 60s here across the hill country and San Antonio area where the clouds are a little thicker there's the scene outside and we've got 67 at the airport still reporting some drizzle with southerly winds at about six miles per hour visibility has improved quite a bit although Randolph still reporting half a mile but I think the fog for the most part is gone it it took some time for this to lift as well. It's just that time of year, low sun angle, it takes uh, a while for the fog and low clouds to really burn off. 64, that's the dew point in Kerrville, 64 Hondo, 66 in San Antonio. That puts us in the muggy category. We know that it's going to be muggy through Friday. And you look at the temperatures over the next seven days, our average high is about 65. 73 today, 80 Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Records are, well, we'll be close to them Thursday and Friday before our temperatures plummet on Saturday behind a cold front. We'll be back into the 50s and we'll be below average for, you know, a couple of days before the temperature comes right back close to average, if not above, by next week. Here is the situation across the state. You notice some of those showers, and then I'll take you out west. That's where there's a lot of action, a lot of rain across parts of California, snow in the higher elevations there, and then snow across parts of Nevada. That energy is going to be moving in our direction. First, with a frontal boundary that stalls out in North Texas. Doesn't do much for us. Secondary push of cold air, though, does. 7 a.m. Saturday morning, here comes the cold air. Here comes the line of showers and storms. Behind it, we'll get some overrunning. It'll still be chilly all day long on Saturday and probably into Sunday, too. And we'll have the rain moving across with uh, winds finally dying down some Saturday night. Uh, but just sort of a damp, chilly weekend. There's those warm temperatures, and then there's the cool down Saturday falling into the 50s, 60 percent chance of rain, then a 40 percent chance of some showers on Sunday. I think things begin to wind down as far as the rain goes Sunday afternoon. We clear out on Monday back into the mid 60s, guys. A little bit of everything. Yep. It was cloudy, cold, windy, wet. That's, uh, what, he, that's what he said. And I added that's winter. Yes, but another W. <laughs> Hey, the Spurs spread some cheer during their day off yesterday, and four more San Antonio Sports Hall of Famers. We'll tell you who they are coming up. Hey, the Spurs getting a few days off for rest and maybe a practice or two after going hard for the last week or so. Sunday night, they picked up a big win over the New Orleans Pelicans. No better way to spend a day off than spreading a little cheer at Christmas time. That is what Keldon Johnson did yesterday during his day off. The Spurs forward and Olympic gold medalist teamed with Academy Sports and Outdoors to donate $10,000 for a surprise shopping spree for local families. Five lucky families received a $1,000 shopping spree at the Academy Sports and Outdoors on Loop 410 last night where they got to pick out Christmas gifts like bikes and games and shoes and other apparel. In addition, Academy Sports and Outdoors surprised the nonprofit Wish for Our Heroes with a $5,000 gift card for active military families and veterans this holiday season. It was great, you know, to see the kids smile and, you know, really get to go and pick whatever they wanted, you know, and, and, and smile and, you know, see the relief of their parents uh, was, was big for me, you know, and it, it, it made my day seeing them, seeing them happy. Better check the Coyote and see what he picked as well. All right, so they get a day for practice, and then they back out on the court tomorrow night. Charlotte Hornets are in town, and that tip-off is at 7.30 at the AT&T Center before they head back out on the road. Hey, a big moment for former Spur, George Gervin. Eastern Michigan's basketball arena is now named after him. During ceremonies over the weekend, the Iceman made the trip to his alma mater as they officially named their basketball venue the George Gervin Game Above Center. The perfecter of the finger roll and Spurs legend played for Eastern Michigan back in 1971 and 72 before becoming a member of the Spurs in 1974. Later inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame back in 1996. The Iceman got a little emotional during the ceremony as well. You know, you have a day like this, um, you know, how humbling is it to be, you know, loved like this? I um, mean, you know, I always say, you know, and I always said it most of my life, everybody needs a somebody. And today, y'all are my somebody. Oh, you know, he can still finger roll, too. Hey, a big day for a local high school football stud. Congratulations going to Justin Grad and Aggies defensive lineman. To Marvin Leal, he has been named first-team All-American by the Associated Press. 
Leal, who was already declared for the NFL draft, finished with eight and a half sacks this season, leading a defense that held opponents to less than 16 points a game. That ranked him number three in the nation. He is joined on the team by offensive lineman Kenyon Green, who was the only player in the NCAA to log 80 or more plays at four different positions and the first Aggie player to receive back-to-back -back All America honors since Miles Garrett did it. The 2022 class of the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame announced at the Alamo Dome yesterday four new members will be inducted. The Dean of High School Coaches is the late George Pasterchik. He spent most of his career at St. Gerard's High School, but also had coaching stints with the San Antonio Toros and Charles, as well as the high school all-star football game. He will be joined by Sophia Young, Malcolm, a two-time All-American at Baylor, leading her team to their national championship in 2005, later the fourth pick in the WNBA draft by the San Antonio Silver Stars. She played there nine years. Another inductee into the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame, former Marshall High School standout Indy Kalu. Ursula knows about Indy Kalu. He played for the Rice Owls and went to the NFL for Philadelphia, Washington, and Houston. And finally, Natalie Napolino, five-time All-American who set cross-country indoor and outdoor track records at Baylor. To get that call to say you're being inducted into the San Antonio Hall of Fame, I mean, that, that really, you know, hits home, man. It, 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 you just start reflecting on everything, taking the Via bus to practice at Pat Neff Middle School. Like, it was just... It, 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 words can't describe how much it means to me. I heard that there's going to be a plaque with my name on it out here somewhere at the Alamo Dome, and I'm, I'm, my kids are going to see that. So it's, it's, it's unbelievable to me, and I'm truly honored. The 2022 candidates will be inducted in the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame on Saturday, April 23rd at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Congratulations to all of them. I'll remind you, you're looking at me like you don't remember. Okay, so Indy Kalu came to the station years ago and did an instant replay promo where he was running around just knocking everybody out oh, because he's such yes. a big guy. And he runs by you yes. and stops, and he's not going to hit you, of course. He just comes by you and smiles and says, hi, Ursula, and then he keeps going after whoever. Now I remember. Yeah, I, I, I'm still in pain because he got me coming out of okay. an, audit, uh, an edit booth and just Those guys bam. know how to hit. And he didn't even really try to hit. He was like being gentle. He was like, ooh, that hurt. <laughs> That's why. But he runs by you. You're not a football player. Yeah, exactly. But I... You remember that now? I now I remember yeah. the call out. That yeah. was good. <laughs> All right, Christmas Day approaching quickly. If you're still waiting to buy gifts online, you might want to get a move on. The shipping deadlines you need to know about, that's coming up in your next half hour. And hundreds of millions of devices worldwide could be exposed to a newly revealed software vulnerability. Details coming up after the break. As the U.S. passes 50 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 today, marking one year since the first COVID-19 vaccination. About 800,000 people here have died as a result of the virus. Roughly 60% of Americans are vaccinated, though, against COVID-19. And in some areas like California and New York, mask mandates are once again being put in place. This is a pandemic. People are sick. You know, this thing keeps mutating. You can wear a mask. It's not a big deal. Hey, I just can't wait for this to end. I mean, I just I can't wait till I could take this off. Meanwhile, in New York City, a vaccine mandate is in effect. A small group of doctors and nurses asked the Supreme Court, though, to block the order. So far, the court has refused to do so. Now to the worsening COVID crisis in the United Kingdom. The British Health Secretary saying Omicron is set to become the dominant COVID strain in London. And the UK has reported its first death of a person with that new variant. ABC's Maggie Rooley is in London with the details. Health officials are saying that no other variant has spread this fast, and they fear that in less than 36 hours, Omicron will become the dominant variant here in London. Now, already, it makes up 44% of cases in the city, and numbers are doubling every two to three days. So far, there are 10 confirmed cases in hospitals, and the first death from Omicron has been reported here in the UK. But at this point, we still don't know anything about that patient's age or any pre-existing conditions. Officials are warning, though, that we should expect those 
those numbers to dramatically increase in the days and weeks that lie ahead. But by how much and how severe, that we still don't know. This is such a new variant, and officials are trying to keep up with science that's unfolding in real time. But they say they do know that the best bet is boosters, and the health secretary is confirming that two shots is not always enough to prevent symptomatic infection of Omicron. But a booster does provide strong protection. Now, since that announcement, we've been seeing long lines at pop-up booster clinics throughout the city. As the government here warns, we're in another race of variant versus the vaccine. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, London. A senior Biden administration cyber official warning the tech industry to address what she calls one of the most serious flaws she's ever seen. The vulnerability is in a Java-based software. It's called Log4j. Some of the world's biggest tech firms use it to log data. Experts say suspected Chinese hackers are already attempting to use it to break into organizations' computer networks and that it could take weeks to address the vulnerabilities. Attackers reportedly had more than a week's head start on exploiting this software flaw before it was publicly disclosed. Organizations are now in a race against time trying to figure out if their systems have been exposed. Outside with live camp, I guess we don't have to worry about getting sunburned this week. That's, that's There's the, that. No, no sunscreen needed. That's that's very true. <laughs> We're looking on the bright side. Well, and there's uh, there's not much bright to look at because it's so cloudy. Uh, Ooh, nice. You know, that was good. See, uh, the, the thing is, though, with the clouds, we're still going to get warm. Despite the clouds, we're still going to make temp get temperatures up close to 80 degrees, which is pretty impressive for December. Let's look at the numbers right now. It is 85 in Brownsville, 80 in Houston and Corpus Christi. So you can see the warmth there hugging the coast. And we're feeling some of that here, too. Temperatures will eventually make it into the mid 70s today. You'll find some 60s around the state, but all in all, this is above average. It has been a very warm start to December, as we pointed out. And it's not only here, it's across a large portion of the country. Uh, we've got 60s all the way up to St. Louis. Florida still very warm. Washington, D.C. at 58. Some cold stuff up there around Caribou, Maine, where you would expect it to be. Cut Bank at 14. And there is some cold air that will spill down this weekend, but all in all, still above average. Looking at temperatures here locally, 73 at Stenson, 67 Boulevardi, 67 Canyon Lake, and you'll notice down here they're starting to, we're starting to see some breaks in the clouds, and so there could be some, a little bit of sun this afternoon, not a lot, but a little bit, and that will uh, allow temperatures to get up there into the low to mid 70s. 73 is what we're forecasting here in town, east southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, and even warmer coming up tomorrow. Thursday and Friday. Another look at that seven day forecast is coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. The National Film Registry preserves cinematic heritage and 25 movies are being added. We're going to take a look at some of the iconic films still ahead. And online retailers are offering special deals to get you to wrap up your holiday shopping. The deals and deadlines are what you need to be aware of so you can get your deliveries before Christmas. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. A scathing report from a U.S. Senate committee calling out the FAA for its lack of oversight over aviation safety. This comes even after a new law was passed following those two fatal Boeing 737 MAX crashes that took the lives of 346 people. Now, the law strengthened the safety requirements for certifying aircrafts, but it has not been enough, that according to the committee. Meanwhile, HSBC will be requiring all of their clients to come up with a plan now to cut their use of coal by the end of 2023. The bank making the move as they aim to cut the use of carbon emissions in the fight against climate change. The plan will see HSBC cut exposure to thermal coal financing by 25% in 2025 and then 50% by 2030. Any client that refuses to comply with the bank's policy will have their finances cut. And that deadly Amazon warehouse collapse in Illinois being investigated by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. This comes after a tornado tore through the building during a string of tornadoes that struck the Midwest. West. Six people were killed in the warehouse and one was injured last Friday during that incident. And that's your Cheddar News business and tech update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. 
a watch or your phone. The clock is ticking less than two weeks until Christmas Day. And if you still need to ship some stuff, you have even less time. Here's a look at the shipping deadlines. It's important to note that the United States Postal Service, UPS and FedEx all have different deadlines and mailing options for customers. Most of the deadlines are coming up on Wednesday the 15th. That's tomorrow. Also, the deadlines for USPS is for the continental US, not Alaska and Hawaii. If you're mailing out anything to those states, there are different deadline dates. You can find all this information online at KSET.com. And just in time for those shipping deadlines, free shipping day. Today, many on online retailers are offering free shipping incentives. According to freeshippingday.com, hundreds of stores are offering free shipping and on top of that, saving codes. Hoping those extra offers will help to seal the deal for shoppers still trying to decide on gifts. This is a very exciting day because a lot of major retailers promise on-time delivery for the Christmas holidays. And because it's so close to Christmas, it lights a little fire under us to get those orders placed. And here are some more deadlines for you for FedEx Ground. It's Thursday, December 15th, and UPS says December 21st, the last day for a three-day select delivery. And Americans are packing up and headed out over the next couple of weeks. AAA expects more than 109 million Americans to travel at least 50 miles in the immediate days surrounding Christmas and New Year's. That's up almost 34 percent from last year. The group says the increase will bring travel back to nearly 2019 levels. More than 100 million Americans will hit the road for holiday getaways and gatherings. More than 6 million people are expected to travel by air and 3 million people are booking buses, trains and cruises. And if you're sticking around in San Antonio for the weather, mm. good luck to yeah. you. It's a little gloomy, but you guys tell me if I ordered online, I need to order online Christmas gifts today in order for them to be on time. You're not done yet? Getting there. <laughs> wow. I guess I got some work to do you today. get moving. <laughs> wow. Uh, no kidding. She's already got all hers wrapped. And you have it. On top of it. Uh, 67 so far today. 60 was the low this morning. The averages are 65 and 42. So we were well above average for the low temperature. 85 and 22 are the records. Nowhere near those, but it will be fairly warm today. We'll talk about our rain chances this weekend. Coming up. I hate to use the word gloomy with the gray, but it is kind of gray. Yeah. But we're not using gloomy because well, Christmas I, we is we all know how you hate the humidity, too. Well, yeah. But, and you know. we got that going for us today. <laughs> Great. <laughs> we do. Uh, it's been an unusual December. There's, there's no doubt about that. But we're, we're still in the Christmas spirit here. There you go. Christmas trees. Thank you. It'll be fine. Uh, we'll get some cooler weather by the weekend, so it'll feel a little bit more like winter, Saturday, and Sunday. We just got to get through this work week first. Let's go outside for you. It is, yes, gray at the moment. Uh, we had a lot of drizzle and fog earlier. That's starting to lift a little bit. We're starting to see some breaks in the clouds down to the south, and that's going to allow for some warm temperatures today. 67 at the airport southerly winds at about six miles per hour and still some light mist or drizzle being reported there. We look at the satellite picture it tells the story here. There's all that cloud cover, but there are some breaks. You get down towards Beeville, Carrizo Springs, uh, down towards Catula, and yes, those clouds are trying to break up a little bit. And I think that trend probably continues into the afternoon. This time of year, it takes a lot of time for these clouds to scatter out and we're going to see this same scenario set up tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. So it'll be very, very similar. Temperature wise, where there is more sun, 82 in Victoria. Underneath the clouds, we've got 60s, 60, 63 Rock Springs, 69 in Kerrville, 77 and mostly cloudy right now in Katua. There's like the, the radar. There are some showers out there. These are not heavy at all, other than this little band right here moving just to the west of Howitzville. Other than that, it's just a couple of light sprinkles and can't rule out a shower east of San Antonio today. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. That rain is moving right through Shiner at this hour and will continue to work north, probably missing Howitzville just to the west. Here's a look at the dew points. We mentioned the humidity is high, stays high through Friday. And then, as you might imagine, with our cold front, the dew points drop off. And by next week, we'll be back in the dry air and we'll see some cooler morning lows. The forecast temperatures today up around 73 here in town, but you'll get some warmer readings down to the south. Slightly cooler to the north where the clouds will be a little bit thicker tonight. 
66. That's it. That's well above average for morning lows. And then we're back close to 80 tomorrow afternoon. And I, I think if we do get some breaks in the clouds, you'll see quite a few 80s on the map on your Wednesday. Uh, again, we showed you the radar and satellite here, but we'll zoom out and we'll show you the big picture. A lot of clouds stretching from San Antonio all the way up to Dallas and to parts of Arkansas. That moisture surging north again and uh, looking at temperatures. It's just a really mild day here in Texas with the uh, 80s along the coast and then 60s and 70s as you go throughout the rest of the state. Uh, it's uh, going to stay this way again for the next few days. And with that, uh, we're, we're going to see well above average temperatures to start the month. So this is uh, sort of the month in review. Now we are projecting next few days that will be above average, but it's showing that we're 8.5 degrees above average for December so far. We've only had one day where we've been below average, and that was on the 12th. Otherwise, it has been fairly warm, and we've warmed as high as 83 degrees. That was back on December 10th. So our forecast shows that a front moves to our north on Thursday. This does not move through, but it's the secondary front and th th that will move through and, and push in some of that cooler air and give us some gusty winds and give us some rain too. I mean, that's important because we haven't seen rain in a while here. Some showers and storms, I think, initially with the front and then with a piece of energy coming in out of the west, we'll get some overrunning and showers will be a good bet most of the day on Saturday and at least the first half of the day on Sunday. And that will keep temperatures down. So it'll be jacket weather Saturday and Sunday if you have plans to be out and about. Uh, 50s uh, by the afternoon on Saturday, by the way, after starting off near 70 and then a high of only around 50 degrees on Sunday with that 40 percent chance of showers, a 60 percent chance of rain on Saturday. Guys, dismal looking Saturday. Yes, but you'll have all your shopping done by then, right? <laughs> um, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> all right. So you all can right. wrap gifts on Saturday there you go. like you did last week. Uh huh. If you missed them on the big screen, some movies are making their small screen debuts. We're going to take a look at what's new on home video in the spotlight. The Library of Congress has selected 25 more films per pre for preservation. What movies made the cut coming up after the break? Some beloved films are being inducted into the National Film Registry. The Library of Congress says the 25 films include The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and the 1997 biographical film Selena. The National Library said this year's selections date back nearly 120 years. The oldest was the Ringling Brothers Parade film back in 1902. The librarian of Congress, there is such a thing, and a film historian will discuss the latest inductees in a television special on Turner Classic Movies. It's coming up this Friday at 7. And from recent box office hits to another classic starring Matthew McConaughey and Leonardo DiCaprio. They're all arriving on home video today. CNN's Rick Damagella has a preview. All in. Oscar Isaac and Tiffany Haddish star in The Card Counter. The thriller about a military interrogator turned gambler saw limited theatrical release and is now available on Blu-ray and DVD. Eager to escape a bright future on the Great Plains, Arthur Howitzer Jr. transformed the series of travelogue columns into The French Dispatch. Wes Anderson's The French Dispatch is out now on digital platforms. The anthology comedy features an ensemble cast that includes Bill Murray, Francis McDormand, and Timothy Chalamet. I say before all of you, I spoke the truth. Sir Ridley Scott's The Last Duel arrives on 4K UHD, Blu-ray, and DVD. The historical drama stars Jodie Comer, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, and Adam Driver. Is that a burnt orange 1993 station wagon? Or is it? Ah! Who are these unstoppable warriors? We're the Mitchells, the only people who can save the world. The Mitchells vs. the Machines finds an awkwardly dysfunctional family teaming up to stop a robot apocalypse. The animated adventure invades digital platforms along with DVD and Blu-ray. I'm, I'm good with water for now, though. Thank you. It's his first day on Wall Street. Give him time. Based on a true story, Martin Scorsese's 2013 hit The Wolf of Wall Street gets a promotion with its new 4K Ultra HD release. Binge watching in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. That was a pretty good movie. It was? Yeah, Wolf of Wall Street. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, that's good.
So why is it those night movies, you know, when you go way back in medieval times, why is there always a snow scene? Why? I haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. The, the highlight, the, the guy was around the horse, all dressed up in his night gear, and the snow's falling. But every one of those movies, there's always like a snow scene. Is that like in Scotland or something? I can't, I don't know. Watch the Netflix uh, uh, Hollywood cliches. And oh, yeah, that was and so that's good. great. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't talk about snow scenes, but to kind of explain stuff like that. Anyway, hey, we're yeah. getting closer to Christmas. That's right. So get ready to win big because it is, it is day nine of our 12 days of Christmas giveaway, which means if you win today's prize, you win all nine prizes. Speaking of winning, look at what we have for Christmas dinner. Oh. Jeremy Boomer Acuna from Krause's Cafe and Beer Garden is here. And what are we making for Christmas dinner? Oh, we're going to have some beef Wellington and then finish it off. For dessert, a nice uh, pear galette and with some candied cranberries. Okay, that looks really complicated. How do you make these? Those are very simple, just soaked in simple syrup overnight and then just rolled in sugar and dried out. I and love how it pops in your yeah. mouth. And and so you it's know? like it's nature's little um, pop so, rocks. Or, yes, or, yes, or, yes, <laughs> yes, like little sour candy. All right, we are going to check out what's behind the bar over at, study, at the study space with Jen. Hey, Jen. Yes, I'm working on my bartender skills at the study space here by UTSA. They're giving back all month long, and all you have to do is really come purchase a cocktail to contribute. We'll tell you how SA Live is going to be involved tonight and how you can come contribute. But what I love about this place, you can get bar food, sweets from Dario's Bakery, and yes, coffee too, all under one roof, guys. Back to you. <laughs> oh, that looks good. Okay, have you wrapped all your gifts yet? No. 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 All right, but do you... Question. Yes. Wrapping paper or gift bags? Mmm, let us know how you prefer it at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. Here's a hint, because you got to go... <laughs> yeah.